Welcome back to This Is A Commander Channel, where this is a Commander Channel, and today I'm going to talk about Commander, Tough Rules, and Cool Interactions, Episode 27. Today's episode is going to be a special one for the release of Commander Legends Battle for Baldur's Gate. We just got a whole bunch of new cards, and I have skimmed through the release notes for every single one of the new cards. I've already done a couple videos on some specific cards from the set, and after this video, I plan to do more individual videos on a little over a dozen other cards from the set. These will be for cards that just need a little bit more time to cover their interesting aspects and rules interactions. For this video, things are going to go by pretty quick, and I won't be spending too much time on each card. I also won't be listing any specific comprehensive rules, numbers for these. In the future, I'll for sure be getting around to making dedicated videos on all of these things. And some of these videos I actually already have. But for now, I just want to cover the specific cards that I have, that I believe are things that are likely to be missed by a large number of players. And I'll give you the specific ruling for that card so that if you do encounter these cards and these scenarios in your games, you'll hopefully be able to remember that I brought that card up in this video and you can reference it down the line. Uh, this video is going to be listing the cards in alphabetical order to make things easier for you to reference them later if you need to. Okay, that's enough talking, so let's get to even more talking. Ambitious Dragonborn. Ambitious Dragonborn is not yet on the battlefield when its effect looks for the creature with the greatest power, so any creatures that have a bonus to their power based on the number of creatures on the battlefield won't count it until it enters with counters. For an example of this, if you have out an Ashaya Soul of the Wild who is currently a 10-10, when the Ambitious Dragon is out, Ashaya will become an 11-11, but the Ambitious Dragonborn's replacement effect for how it enters will only see Ashaya for when she is a 10-10 creature. Archivist of Ogma. Archivist of Ogma's triggered ability won't trigger if you search an opponent's library, like with a card like Bribery, or if an opponent searches another opponent's library with something like Bribery. They have to search their own library for the trigger. Baba Lazaga Nightwitch. You may sacrifice permanents that aren't different card types to pay for the cost of Baba Lazaga's activated ability, but if you do, it will just have no effect. Also, you can sacrifice permanents that are multiple types, like Whip of Erebos, which is both an artifact and an enchantment, and if you do so, you only have to sacrifice one other permanent, like just a land or just a creature, and those two permanents that you've sacrificed will satisfy the three permanent types for the activated ability. For all of the gods in this set, like Bane, Lord of Darkness, if they are dealt lethal damage at the same time that their controller's life total is reduced to less than or equal to their starting life total, they will have indestructible at the time that state-based actions are performed, and they will survive because of that indestructibility. Call to the Void. If a creature is chosen more than once, it is destroyed only once. For example, having a single shield counter on it would allow it to survive even if it gets chosen secretly two or more times. I'm probably going to butcher this name. Carnelian Orb of Dragonkind. Dragonkind. Dragonkind, I think is what it is. Uh, if the mana is spent on a non-dragon spell that becomes a dragon creature later in the turn, that creature will not have haste. So, like, if you cast a non-dragon spell with the mana, and then later an effect turns that creature into a dragon, when it was a spell, it wasn't a dragon spell. So, no haste. Caves of Chaos Adventurer. Caves of Chaos Adventurer's last ability checks to see if you've completed a dungeon at the time you exile a card. 
if you haven't completed a dungeon at that time, you cannot cast it without paying its mana cost, even if you complete a dungeon later during the same turn. Also, if you have completed a dungeon when Caves of Chaos Adventure's last ability resolves, you can only play the exiled card without paying its mana cost. You cannot choose to play it normally through this effect. Cloud Kill. It says you own. So if your commander is out on the battlefield but under the control of another player as Cloud Kill resolves, it is still on the battlefield and you own it. So it will still be used to determine the value of X. Cut a deal. Although the draws for this are not optional, if an opponent doesn't draw a card, perhaps because a replacement effect replaces their card draw with another effect, then that player is not counted when determining how many cards that you draw. Uh, also, if an opponent drew more than one card this way due to something like a replacement effect, uh, then you still only draw one card when counting that player. Dragon Cultist. The triggered ability granted by Dragon Cultist looks for the total amount of damage dealt by a single source, even if that damage wasn't dealt all at once or wasn't dealt to the same player or permanent. For example, if an attacking 3-3 creature with double strike deals 3 damage to one blocker in the first combat damage step, and then 3 damage to another blocker in the second combat damage step, then it has dealt a total of 6 damage, and it will cause this ability to trigger. Druidic Ritual If you have fewer than 3 cards in your library, you cannot choose to mill any cards this way. It must be three cards milled. Uh, <laughs> Dynaheer? Dy uh, Invoker Adept. Dynaheer has received a update to its oracle text. Specifically, the delayed trigger ability does not trigger if you activate a mana ability that costs four or more mana to activate. The original printing on this card does not specify this. This is because mana abilities do not use the stack and triggered abilities cannot see them when the triggered ability attempts to resolve. Ellen Harbury's Busybody. If an effect creates a copy of a permanent spell, that spell becomes a token on the battlefield under your control, but that token has not been created. It won't count for Ellen's ability, for more information about things related to this, check out Tough Rules and Cool Interactions Episode 1 as I covered this in that episode. Font of Magic. This includes backgrounds that are your commander, so if you've cast your creature commander twice and then you've also cast your background enchantment from the command zone twice, Font of Magic will reduce your spells by 4 generic mana. Glunch, love this name, Glunch the Bestower. The first chosen player gets to choose the creature they will place the counters on. You do not. You also can choose a player who doesn't control any creatures as the first player chosen. Also, all three players chosen must be different players, although any one of them can be you. If there are only two players in the game, you won't be able to choose a third player, and no one will be able to get to create a treasure token. Hardy Outlander. If the commander creature's power is negative as its triggered ability resolves, then X is considered to be zero. So if you use any spells that reduce their power to less than zero, this effect will see X is equal to zero. It won't actually end up reducing. Ilthid Harvester, once the permanents are face down, no player may mix them up on the battlefield or otherwise try to hide or disguise which card is which. Ilthid Harvester's triggered ability cannot turn double-faced cards face down. 
And if a creature enters the battlefield as a copy of a face down creature, or if a token is created that's a copy of one, that copy has the exact same characteristics as the face down creature, in this case, a 2 2 horror creature with no other characteristics, even though the copy is a face up creature. I'm going to do really bad with this one. Ear, ear, and. I'm just going to say uh, Mr. Eyes Vile Duplication. Mr. Eyes Vile Duplication has received an update to its Oracle text to clarify that the token still has flying even if the creature it's copying isn't legendary. Lizelle's Acrobatics. The creatures you control are exiled before you roll a die. Notably, this means that if any of those creatures have abilities that replace die rolls or trigger due to a die roll, those will not occur. Master Chef, not Master Chief. If your commander is entering the battlefield at the same time as other creatures, then it will enter the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter, but the other creatures will not. This is because the replacement effect that is created by an object entering the battlefield can only apply to itself. Maisie True's word, True, True Sword, aha. Maisie True Sword Paladin. In some unusual cases, the aura put into the graveyard isn't an aura card. This may happen due to copy effects, for example. Uh, in these cases, you will still exile the card and you may cast it, even if it's not an aura now. Moonshea Pixie. Moonshea Pixie's triggered ability counts only players who are still in the game. If an opponent was dealt damage but then left the game, that player is not counted. For more information about things similar to this, check out Tough Rules and Cool Interactions episode 26, as I have covered some similar stuff in that episode. Nine Fingers Keen. If you do not put a gate onto the battlefield via this effect, but already control nine or more gates, you will put all the cards into your hand. You're not required to put a gate out for the rest of the effect to happen. Noble Heritage. Although you'll have protection from players who take advantage of your generous offer, permanents you control will not. They can still be affected. Creatures can still attack you, even if you do have protection from their controller, although any damage that they would deal to you will be prevented. Packed Weapon. If an opponent gains control of the creature that Packed Weapon is attached to, but doesn't also gain control of Packed Weapon, you still control the Packed Weapon, and you still don't lose the game for having zero or less life, as long as it is attached. Skullwinder. This one is actually a reprint, but I figured I'd mention that Skullwinder's Enters the Battlefield ability targets only the card that is in your graveyard. If that card is an illegal target as the ability tries to resolve, like somebody's exiled your graveyard, then the ability will not resolve and none of its other effects will happen. No cards will be returned to any player's hand. Now, it's important to note that you choose the target card as you put Skullwinder's triggered ability on the stack, but you do not choose an opponent until after you have returned the card to your hand. And you may choose an opponent with no cards in their graveyard. In that case, they will not get to return anything. Vexing Puzzle Box. If an effect instructs you to roll one or more dice and add some number to that roll, then the result for this card is the total after adding that number. And if an effect instructs you to roll one or more die and then to ignore one or more of them, the result for this card is only what is not ignored. And in those rare occasions that you're in a game of plane chase, the result of rolling the planner die is not a number and does not cause vexing puzzle boxes first ability to put charge counters on it. Vicious Battle Rager. Uh, now, if Vicious Battle Rager becomes blocked by more than one creature, its triggered ability will trigger once for 
each creature that is blocked it. This is a really good card to use with lure type effects that can force your opponent to block with all of their available blockers. Okay, uh, anyhow, that's all I've got for today's episode. Again, there's going to be a lot more episodes coming out, uh, probably around a dozen or so, on other cards that just need a lot more time dedicated to them to fully explain and go into the actual rules uh, referenced uh, for them. But anyway, uh, as always, I hope that all of you found this video to be entertaining at least, and I hope that a few of you have even learned something about all these crazy rules in this great game of magic. Have a good one. Ta-ta.